you can see here on the background that I've got, um, we're talking about, although it's basic flying concept, recovering from a bad landing. You'll say to me, ah, isn't, you know, have you quickly put that together? No, I've actually prepared this, uh, the presentation of this part of a presentation a long time ago. But during the last week, we had a prop strike, and that was due to uh, not properly handling, let's call it a bad landing. Is that a pointing of a finger? Anybody, um, you can have how many thousands of hours? And when you do a bad landing, well, you've got to recover. But if you do not know how to recover, and if you don't think that you should recover, it might be too late. We've seen wheelbarrowing landings and how many uh, directional control losses, a breakage of nose wheels, the bending of firewalls and stuff like that. So it is quite important. So let's, let's just get stuck into this one a little bit. Um, first of all, the aircraft landed in landing configuration, undercarriage and probably full or second notch flap. Well, in this specific case, it was probably, uh, you know, uh, second notch flap that's used for, for landing. It, it doesn't matter. We're talking here about uh, the approach configuration. The landing configuration stall speed is lower than the clean uh, configuration stall speed. Yes, of course. Um, how much is it less? Well, give or take a couple of knots, but about five knots. Nothing that you can go home and write about. Okay? It's just a quick bump there on the airspeed indicator. Then, ground effect assists only when the aircraft is actually in ground effect. If it's not in ground effect, uh, then it has ballooned out of ground effect. And that is the normal stuff. We're coming in and, we, and you hold off too much and she balloons. The moment that you balloon, you're actually losing ground effect. So ground effect can only be effective when you are close to the ground. I'm not going to get into the formulas of that. You know what I'm talking. Here would we land. We just balloon out of that and immediately the, the capabilities of the machine actually changes. Uh, unloading the aircraft will reduce the stalling speed further. Uh, this is, these are one of those things that I, I'm amazed that so many, or so little people actually know that the basic stalling speed is done at 1G. In other words, lift equals weight, 1G. If you increase the Gs, you are increasing the apparent weight and therefore you are increasing the Gs, therefore you are increasing the stalling speed. Same configuration, just by loading it. Loading, it means to put load. Load is, is for the purists out there, that's your N. N equals total lift over weight. We just call it Gs. As you load it and you put more Gs in, your stalling speed increases. But then the opposite is also true. As you unload, the stalling speed gets down. So if your load is less than one, then your stalling speed will become less than the normal basic stalling speed. All right, that's not the part uh, of this, this uh, exercise. Unloading or lowering the nose significantly needs height. Look here. It needs height. It needs height. And it might not be available. So you can't just push the nose forward if there's no height. When the aircraft is facing down, what are you going to do? Uh, let's have a look. Getting the nose in level flight attitude will already aid unloading and angle of attack lowering as well as delay the rapid decrease in speed. Um, remember now that if the nose attitude is too high, okay, you ballooned and now you push forward. And if you do that, there the ground is where you're going to fly in. So the idea is from a balloon not to over rotate towards the nose because invariably there's going to be too little height. Okay, so the first part is from there to level the disc, or to at least the aircraft. Here I'm getting back into helicopter mode now. All right, getting the nose level, and we said that. Adding full power is the magic ingredient. Look at this, adding full power, adding full power. That is the magic ingredient, because the moment that you've got your landing configuration, you've got full power, I promise you the stalling speed will come down at least minimum another five knots. 
in some aircraft actually quite a bit more. Now, I've, I've shown that to guys when you do your full power stalls. Oh, while well, we're talking about full power stall, I don't want everybody to go out there now and go and do a landing configuration full power stall. No, no, no. Go and do that with somebody that knows what they're doing and understand what they're doing. Because if you're there, flick, uh, and, the, and the flaps are out, you can overspeed the flaps and, 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 and. So the, there's a little bit to know about that. But once you've seen how slow you can actually fly, you will get that confidence. But the confidence must be there. If, the, if it looks like a bad landing, open up that throttle, whichever hand is where the throttle is, and let that engine take you out. It will re-energize the insides of the wings. It will give you elevator. It gives you all the control that you need. Just open up the power. All right. Now, getting a little bit thrifty there. Um, I say the recognition uh, that is not a good landing and the landing that needs attention is vital. So just look at that. Um, you, 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 if we do not see what's going to happen with us, we cannot react to it. And you'll say to me, but Charlie, you're one of those moods where you're trying to tell me that blind people can't fly. Yes, I, I'm telling you that. Yes, because the decision making that you're making in flying, specifically when you're coming to land or take off, is what you see on the outside. It's not an instrument landing, it's a visual landing. It's you and Mother Earth. And if you don't look at Mother Earth, she will rise and smite thee. Or something like that. All right. Uh, recognition can only take place if one looks outside. Uh, it, uh, of course, it, 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 it looks as if, if this is, you know, all 100%, I mean, that's straightforward. But remember before you can make a decision how to react to anything you need to understand what's happening to you and everything is happening in relationship to the ground not to the aircraft to the ground the the K factor the constant unit here will be mother ground and she's not gonna batch she does not care about you you must care about you and how will you be able to care about you you will have to see. You're not going to hear the ground coming. You're not going to smell the ground coming. You're not going to taste the ground coming. You've got to look. Ah, there's the ground coming. What must I do and then not overreact? Okay. Um, attitude and direction is both very important. Attitude. I'm not talking about people's attitude. I'm talking here about the aircraft attitude. The, the attitude of the aircraft, if it's too high, you will get into stall. If it's too low, you're going to fly your nose into the ground. Hello? The attitude of the aircraft is the longitudinal, that's now the pitch attitude, eh? in reference to the horizon. But no, we don't have to look there at the far horizon when we can land here. You can look in front of you, you can see. Oh my goodness, I'm approaching the ground like this. Where I should have been like, or slightly like that. Oh, that's too high. And something else can actually happen. Okay, nonetheless, let's, um, let's uh, go to the, the next one. Seeing can many times not be facilitated directly over the nose of the aircraft. Ooh, I've said that many times before. You see people here and they come and, and then they round out and the nose comes up and here goes the neck. It's like a meerkat. And eventually you're sitting here and you're looking over the nose. It, if it can't happen, it can't happen. You must get used to the fact that you can look to the sides as well to see. And now you've got a little bit of a paradox error because the aircraft is moving like this. You're looking slightly to the side and there's a little bit of angle. You must learn to work with the angle. You can't land the aircraft skew like that. Hmm, not good for the other carriage. Or the passengers or the mecha mechanics of the aircraft, no. Yeah, it's something that we learn. I, my first 90 hours that I ever flew in my life was on a Harvard. You cannot see over the nose of a Harvard. You can stretch your neck like any super meerkat. A free state meerkat won't do the thing. So you must learn where to look and how to look. Your, your instructor must teach you where to look and how to look. 
All right, stretching like, okay, there I've got this whole <laughs> meerkat thing. All right, but remember the nose where the surface and relative direction. Whoa, I see that such a lot of times where um, you're coming in, okay, I'll, I'll do it like this from your side, coming in and the guys do this and you want to land. And as the nose comes up, where? Just a quick thing. If you're running in, and let's say there's a wind blowing that takes you that way, with the rudders, you keep the nose long and the aircraft's longitudinal axis aligned with the aircraft. And as he drifts, you just lose, use a little bit of aileron into wind. Yes, in other words, instead of the wind like this, it's going to balance and it's going to be like that. And you'll probably land on the one wheel before the other wheel. It's not, it's not that difficult. It, it, it can easily be accomplished, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things. You must, you must try it. Okay, recovery from a bad landing, and that's what we're all about at this moment in time. Immediately unload the aircraft to a level with the ground or surface attitude by looking outside to avoid flying into the runway. Wait, let me get that into red. Avoid flying into with the nose surface. That's the most common problem that we have and that's the most common accident that we have and that is if you don't see it and if you overreact. Remember that once you've taken the aircraft, you round out and you balloon and you've overcorrected it, then it's normally very, very difficult to, to try and round out a second time. And normally that leads to an impact of the nose. So if you balloon, that's it's not the end of the world. You've got a level, level. And now you negotiate the ground where you go slightly down and you do it. You've got to level the ship. Remember that. These are the phases in, in how you've got to do it. There's, there's, that's the way to do it. Okay? If the speed is too low for, to facilitate another round out before touchdown, immediately. Ooh, I want to put this one in a highlighter, but I also need a highlighter of color. I want to say immediately. Ooh, look at that. Immediately. Immediately. I, I cannot... <laughs> you probably even can't see it anymore now. You just see that red blob on there. It says immediately apply how much power? Full power. Full power. Full. Whoa. But remember, the moment that you pull foot, put full power, depending on the aircraft type, it can yaw to the left, it can roll to the left, it can mostly, if you go around, because you've trimmed for the landing and you put full power, the nose will pitch up. That's your biggest danger. So you cannot look inside. To open up full throttle, there's nothing to see inside. The speed is of just about zero consequence at this moment in time because it's too low anyway. We made the mistake. We look outside, full power, and immediately take the stick and make sure that we fly level with the ground. And that, that's important because now you're there, here you come, you see, oh goodness, I'm going to level the ship full power. The aircraft knows want to do that. Push it forward, look outside. Fly level until you've got your speed and you'll get away with it. I think I've made the point of the full power there so we can move on. Take care to maintain the level flight by okay, countering. I just want to, to change that. By countering the aircraft tendency to nose pitch up. That, okay. Now, why am I putting so much emphasis on this? Do you, okay, I, I cannot name the types of aircraft. Because when I write about it, I'm in trouble. But now, let's just... You... Over-rotation. On a go-around. Full power up and that is the cause of many a tragedy. That is so dangerous. Look outside and react to the outside. Right. So, fly level with the ground without harsh inputs as the stalling speed is close. Yes, the stalling speed is close. I understand that. That's why you can't make harsh positive because you increase the G-load. Just think about that. 
full power level of the disc and now we're waiting and don't worry the aircraft will accelerate quite quickly and then gently fly out okay gently gently uh, do not pick up flaps quite yet so that 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 is quite an in, uh, important one here do not pick up oh goodness it, it's in red again but um, do not pick up the flaps yet all right your lowest stalling speed is full flap full power if you even want to fly at the lowest speed it's got to be inside ground effect but to pick flaps up is not the answer I know yo, but I've been taught we must go to optimum flap no I can take you out there and I'll show you full power stall full flap landing configuration but full flap at the stage crane full power is the lowest speed you can fly the aircraft now you add it in ground effect man <laughs> you can fly on a on a whisper of the wind but if you load that aircraft she's going to do what you really don't want it to do do not increase the flap either okay once the aircraft is under control slowly 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 initiate the climb and retract flaps one notch at a time for every five oh I, I don't know where this one got lost one notch yeah, but Charlie, you don't understand. I've got this thing that I can, uh, you know, it's, there's no notches. Then start counting. One, two, three, check. Uh, one notch. One, two, three, check. Two knots. One, two, three. Full flap. Up. One, two, three, check. Count it out. Make your notches. Don't tell me there are no notches. Think and do it. Because you need to increase the speed by five knots per flap setting and what I say that's the rule yeah but I don't fly by the rules <laughs> yeah let me tell you one thing about not flying by the rules that is when you have an accident by the rules it's your choice okay shoot shoot Ooh, okay it sounds serious another approach and use the techniques is discussed all right um, there's always a second time there's no dishonor Ooh, I've got to highlight that there is no dishonor in going around. There is no dishonor in going around. Null. Professional pilots do that all the time and walk away to fly another day and... Uh, oh, I see you. How many times? I've gone around many times. So... I'm not playing for 15 seconds of fame for you, my man. I'm playing for myself. It's my butt. I couldn't care if you're going to be impressed whether I had to go around or not. Get over it. I've said it so many times. I don't know how many hours you've got. Each one of those hours are precious. And remember, the last hour is the one that counts. The last hour is the one by which you will be judged. Good. Go around. Many mishaps during this phase due to. Go around decision made too late. All right. If you see the symptoms coming, go around. Okay. Wrong power setting. Ooh. Remember, on the approach. Well, on pre-landing, you're already going to set the mixture for altitude pitch for the go around and the throttle is normally for the configuration to need because you need a speed but those two things mixture and pitch must be correct for the full power and rapid go around depending on the height never too rich never too lean I'm not teaching you how to set that but remember if you go around and let's say the pitch is coarse I've heard it many times then the mixture is set right the pitch is too coarse you open up in the air with <laughs> it can't it's too late then to say oh sorry sorry it's got no impact zero aerodynamic relevance nux nothing zilch haba zero 
Uh, okay. Wrong configuration. Loss of directional control on the runway. Ooh, but remember, if you wheel barrow, if you come in, the speed is too high and you're forcing it down and you run on the nose wheel, then this is happening. And hey, it doesn't matter whether you're flying, I suspect, anything from a Boeing to a gyrocopter. Nose wheel angles, not good. That's why we say to people, hold off a little bit. But if you've got this fantastic speed that you're arriving, you haven't got the right flap settings because somebody told you that flaps are bad. You, you know, hey, get somebody can teach you the real value of flap. Yeah, but I've, yeah, I, I know maybe you've learned never to use the flaps correctly. But then get to somebody that can teach you the, the flap settings. Flaps are very, very important for lower speed control and for the go around. All right. Um, lots of the directional control when you're wheel bearing, that's going to over rotation. And I've already said that's one of the biggest killers out there. Uh, lots of situation awareness of the aircraft versus the environmental. You, you got to know where the wind is coming from. You got to know where the obstacles are. You got to know where the runway is. Now, I've seen so many people, they go and then they pull this. They come up, 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 nose up, and they, then the meerkat next goes up, and then eventually you can't see the ground. Did they blind? They don't look left or right. And now they can drift off the runway. Really? Okay. If that's how you want to fly. But you can't fly like that. You're going to damage an aircraft some other time. Instructors, you must instruct correctly. Students, these things are not negotiable. There's, there's a few things that aren't negotiable. There's just a couple of them. Uh, yeah, but I got away with it uh, seven times. I can tell you now the eighth time is not guaranteed. And it doesn't matter how many times you got away with the wrong stuff. It doesn't make it right. Think. Oh, okay. Aggressiveness or hard maneuver? Hmm. With a low speed. The last thing you can do is to now rick and plis, plick and pull and push and, and shove and jove and all that. No. Uh, this is where you get your soft hands, you get your throttle in and you keel. And trimming, trimming is such a good thing. Trim, trim, trim. Because if you just relax your attention and you forget that forward pressure and you now get busy inside, the nose will pitch past and you're going to stall and it's too close to the ground. If it drops a wing, it's a goner. Let me, let, me, let, 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 let me get this one. When we do stall practicing, and you've done sport practicing quite a lot, we, we normally go straight and level and slowly up with the nose, and there she judges it goes down. Remember, if you over-rotate, you end up in that situation. Nose is far too high. And now, the attitude that we have brought along your stalling was much lower, but now it's already much higher. Um, you're out of control. Before you are out of control, You've got to think, these things are real. They really hurt and they really require Low speed downwind turns. Ooh, I can tell you many a pilot who said to me, oh, I, uh, and then all of a sudden it's like all the lift uh, falls and you, uh, the, the lift is gone and we fall out of the sky. Be careful. Helicopter pilots, be careful. What about the, the, the big guys? Aerodynamics is valid for the small and the big guys. Maybe you've got more power to pull yourself out of trouble. But actually go and think. The bigger the aircraft, the more everybody ensures that you stick by the rules. You fly for an airline, everything is like that. Is it a good or a bad thing? Well, I think it's good. I want to sit in the back. I don't want to be the result of your experimentation in the front. But I also don't want to do it in a small aircraft. Remember, what, what we practice is how we're going to react. When you're in trouble, you're going to react to your most natural or most seated or settled in instinct. So if you've been taught the right thing and repetitiously you did that, the chances that you will revert to that is very good. 
if you've been doing the wrong thing, you will never know one to, in how to do the right thing. When you're under pressure, you're going to default back to your habit or that which you know. I, I know you've heard that before, but uh, listen to it again. All right. Um, apply full power always, single prop, results in the yaw to the left. Not going to say too much. But remember, eyes outside. Then you will know to correct. Don't let it run all over the runway. Just watch where you're going. Maintain direction, control, look outside. See the result. Now, remember, we look outside and we peep inside. We don't look inside and then up. We look, peep inside. Just from a landing, I just want to go with it. From the time that I retard the throttle to round out to land, the speed on the inside is zero significance. The height above the ground and the attitude of the aircraft is all that is significant. Speed doesn't count anymore. When we go around, now speed becomes important anymore. So understand to look at the right places. So here we're saying outside, directional control. So why are you running off a runway? Because you're not seeing that. And if you see, you must react. Otherwise, what the hell does it help you see? You can't, oh, I looked to the right and I saw the bus coming, but I still drove in front of it. Hello? Should I say, duh? <laughs> it's one of those things. Uh, okay, I understand. Sometime in the moment it's too great, blah, blah, blah. But we must teach the youngsters that to be able to do the right thing under pressure. Yeah, but Charlie, we can't all be as hard as you. No, I, <laughs> I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be like you. And how should you be? Not tolerant of the wrong stuff. Help. You can help them in a more gentle manner. I, I tend to slap it right. You can talk it right. It's going to take probably a little bit longer, blah, blah, blah. But that, that's not the point of the issue. The issue is you cannot let it slip. Each instructor, your student is a product of your instruction. You cloning yourself, my man. My lady. <laughs> okay. All right. One stabilized peep inside, ascertain the airspeed, and then required unstick. Unstick, unstick just means to get the aircraft airborne. The actual unstick physical takeoff is a smooth maneuver with the intention to get airborne accelerated level flight for your climbing speed. Okay, so VY. Full power must be applied during the phase and only when safely in the air, a positive rate of climb, then you bring the power. If there's a positive rate in climb of everything, then you come back, throttle, set the pitch, and if needed, the mixture. Please don't do it as a rhyme, a throttle, pitch, and mixture. And then you look at the, and you see, whoa, you've leaned all far too much. Because we do, you must look what you're doing. All right. Um, the trim setting. Now, this whole thing here about the trim setting is crucial. Remember that the aircraft is going to be, if you come in to come and land, the aircraft will, as your speed lowers the nose forward and in end, you will trim up, you will trim up, you will trim up, you will trim up. The moment you go around, the nose will want to pitch. And now you've got to push forward and you've got to trim. Trim, the trim setting for a landing. And that's why we have to test. You can go and check in your PPL test, your CPL test, and your ATPL test. All of them contains that the way we have to test you on a bolt landing. Uh, it's just a fancy for a go around. It's a landing that you couldn't do. You've got to reject the landing. And then you go full throttle. That nose is pitching. Can you do that? It's got to be tested in each test. There it is. Why is it in everybody's test? Because that's so important. Because that's where the over rotation comes from. And there, if you get busy inside the aircraft and you're not looking outside and peeping inside, it is not an IFR takeoff or go around. It's a VFR. If it was IFR and you were properly flying IFR, you would have seen it on the AH. Because you would have been scanning attitude, bank, DI, attitude, bank, VSI. You would have been scanning that attitude. Why would we scan it under IF conditions so we don't scan it on VFR conditions? All right. After takeoff, it must be done according to the manual, but on too low 
Oh, I'm saying, yeah, remember that. Uh, if you're after landing Munch but done at 300 feet, then do it at 300 feet. Okay? Because those, that flap setting is, that is the crucial one. Because if you have a problem, you've already got your first notch flap. Your takeoff flap or your go around flap. Okay? Just one of those things. Um, premature turnout. Ooh, a premature turnout with full flap after takeoff is foolish, it's dangerous, it's ignorant, and it is in. Well, so I can carry on. You want to know the accidents that I can. I can recite those accidents for you. I'm not going to mention the accidents here, but you think. The go around, early turnaround with full flap and with the wrong kind of wing area, you're in trouble. So, do we teach you for a high or low aspect ratio wing? No. We teach you one standard. This is what you do and this is what. And if you have to turn out early, speed, flaps, do not, full flap, bad news on any aircraft on the go around. On the landing, good news. On the go around, not good news. The drag lift ratio is now at its absolute worst. Not that you're necessarily going to stall in any configuration, but if you turn, you lift vector tilts, you're going to pull back. Careful. Over rotation. I'm just going to uh, open up a few of them here. Say the VFR flight scans must be attitude is determined uh, by combining the longitudinal axis. I said that on the horizon. Attitude is the case, climbing a descending constant power setting. Remember your different speeds. Okay, the only way to notice an over rotation, VFR pilots is pick initially up by referring to the outside horizon. I have pilots, they will see it in the artificial horizon. Okay, that I've said. If you do not look, and see what and where you are supposed to, you are flying blind. And blind people, unfortunately, cannot obtain a flying license. And it's really not, I'm, I'm not discriminating against this. Really. Okay, get with it. I'm using that. It is like you are doing this. Then you're also blind. And then you cannot fly. Okay. Um, the aircraft well, pilots are taught to react to what they become aware of. So if you do not come aware of it, there cannot be any reaction. It must make sense. The aircraft will always tend to deviate from the intended heading, height and speed. Without autopilot, which is reactive system, you have to become the reactive system before any tendencies have turned into disaster. Flying is reactive. The aircraft will always try and deviate from the norms. What are the norms? Heading, height, speed. What do you help with it? Certain power setting. There you go. It's not that many, but they're tricky because all of them happens at exactly the same time. Fixate on one, the other one is going to show you a toffee. And then, now, now you look at that one, that, then, then that one jumps out. That's why we've got a scan. That's why we teach a scan. We teach a VFR scan and we teach an IFR scan. And your VFR scan must lead into the IFR scan. So that when we train the pilots up to the next level, they can do that. Now you airline pilots are sitting there and you're saying to me, yeah, man, yeah, man. Well, you know, this is not for, hey guys, um, remember if that autopilot goes, then you're going to go back to attitude bank DSI and attitude bank DI. And you've got to fly the machine, you've got to be able to fly the raw data. I don't have to say that. Um, yeah, but you know, we, no, you can. You, in your simulators, you can do the training. And now and then you are allowed to actually shoot an approach on your own. Just at some other stage, I've flown with many pilots that say they pride themselves in by a certain segment of the approach they do on their own. Now I understand that some airlines won't allow that because you, you have to do an assisted landing. Hmm. 
but we're not all flying A380s okay okay overreacting we've taught that remember that you're going blind when aware of over rotation make immediate steps to sort that out with full power full power the correct attitude will run the correct speed and that then brings me to the end of, of, of because I'm now starting to say the same, 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 same things over a fast landing running out of runway trying to force it down will always result in a nose wheel or wheel barrowing the aircraft always you lose directional control and you crash we've had that here once or twice already second problem you balloon what do you do you over rotate and then you in for a nose wheel contact and the moment the nose hits it's going to do like this it's going to see if I can do it here it's going to do that and then this is going to slam down and this is what's happening so if you balloon level first check what you're doing fly if you cannot take full power and go around do I want to make a point I'm appealing to the instructors so that everybody can just become aware of how and where and what we do when we do a landing is it a bad thing to learn from any from other people even though you have 20,000 hours it can never be a bad thing to learn from others but do not learn their bad sort of habits yeah but remember he's got 30,000 hours it might <laughs> all right I'm still not going to try and learn from you but for me to understand whether you are handling the truth or not I, I will know and you know how are you following things what are you doing are you getting away with it I've seen guys landing uh, the 727 like a greaser landing and it's supposed to be difficult but they've got that knack on how they do it your secrets pass them on especially if they're good secrets all right that's the end of this flight safety meeting I know that it's taken a while but um, we need to learn something flight safety is an attitude an attitude there it is it's an attitude what attitude it's inside here are you sticking to the rules but before you can stick to the rules do you know the rules have I spoken to too junior <laughs> you can never be too senior to listen to the basics because whenever trouble starts it is the basics that will give you the best chance I didn't say there's a guarantee but it will give you the best chance and if you respect yourself which I suspect that you do you will follow what is right right ladies and gentlemen that is then uh, completed for this month until next month what do we do there's a couple of things first of all we must enjoy our flying don't push the limits let somebody teach you the limits there are rules there are regulations it's easy to get past them but then you are opening up your ribcage so my appeal to you is think you're not actually flying in a civilized way because it necessarily suits you it'll keep you alive but remember when you're not longer there it's for your loved ones so just for once think that your stupidity can lead to the tragedy but those which will feel the full impact of the tragedy is your loved ones 
Is that what you want to do? Ah, I've got to be more on a positive note. This is the time of year when everything starts slowing a little bit down and we're going to get this Christmas feeling and don't get the Christmas feeling. Don't get into the air and just be that jolly. But really, go out there and you will find if you fly with inside the rules and you practice, you will become better and it will eventually be the most joyful thing that you can do. I know. I don't want to do anything else. And I'm not going to do anything else. I'm going to do this until I'm tight, totally incapable. And I probably will not know when it's going to happen and you'll have to tell me when it's past my time. Until next month. <laughs>